trans surfers. It's been a long time. What have you been doing, Xavier? We haven't done one of these in um, two months, a month and a half. But well, welcome everybody we, for for coming and to our latest episode of Reality Transplaining with Xavier Watercane. Well, hello, millions of listeners. <laughs> uh, but uh, the thing is that Renee asked a question; I was about to answer it. So this is the yeah. Answer. I didn't really. Well, it wasn't you, really. You didn't really. You didn't really give me the space. You got to give me the space, right? You got to you got to hold that space for me. We've been Renee and I have actually been very busy behind the scenes. Um, concocting courses, new courses, uh, robust, deep, meaty courses. Um, and also, Renee, do you want to talk about your, the other project? Ooh. Yes, let's. Do, okay. okay. Plug right. my own yes. book. <laughs> yes, plug your own book. Yes. There you go. There's the big reveal. We've been working on Renee's yeah. book. I actually have mentioned it a couple times in videos that I've done lately that have not aired yet, but this will be, and I, and I've said something in the Facebook group, but this will be the first time I think people will be hearing about it on YouTube, but I wrote my book. I mean, I wrote the first draft of the book and yes, now. Yes, which is a great, great thing to get done. Some yes, people don't even get to the first draft stage. Uh, yes. Uh, it was like I, it was like I went into like a, um, what do you call that when people become uh when like a they become possessed i was i was like possessed with my own book for what yes, because two two the, weeks just like <laughs> i would say that you would i would say that you were touched by your muse yes i was touched by my muse that's an excellent which, way to put it which only happens when you have the right heart mind coordination it, it, just to give you some insider details, millions of viewers. Um, Renee actually struggled quite a lot with this process, as a lot of people do with the writing process. Writing can be very confronting. Now, if you're conflict avoidant, uh, people you tend not to write because writing does bring up conflict between your story you have in your head and actually putting it down on paper. Uh, it brings up a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of ego involved <laughs> often with writing. God knows I've I mean, enough egotistical writers. Um, it took a while. Would you agree, Renee, in order to, for you to get the proper heart, mind, spirit coordination in order even just to get oh. the draft done? Yeah, I mean, I kind of felt as though like I had been dropped in the middle of a forest at night and was like, I, I just... I did not know the lay of the land at all. And I was, I was in an absolute state of analysis paralysis for sure. I was just like, not, I, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I think also with these sorts of things, when we step to them with a bunch, bunch of like preconceived ideas of how the thing actually works, you know, then when that doesn't match up when you're ready to actually do the thing. I was under the impression that I was going to have to like stop my life and sit down and just start typing out a book, but how it ended up, how it ended up going, my creative process looked much different than that. It essentially became about me just like doing this sort of cerebral vomit into a voice memo and then getting it going and getting it out of me and once it started to flow out then the writing came into play and then it started to actually feel like I was in the process but I don't know I would I would equate it to like somebody scared to jump jump out of an airplane to to skydive and just yes, standing there but, like but, but, but assuming that a skydive proceeds in a particular way rather than actually talk to somebody like me who knows about skydiving or book writing in this case, and says, actually, it's not like that at all. Yes. Uh, it took you a while even just to get to the point where you could actually ask me, in spite of the fact of everything you knew about me and everything that you knew about my expertise, and that I could have just short-circuited a lot of this, the problems that you created for yourself. It just goes to show that if you're not in alignment, you won't even do obvious things like ask somebody who you know. Oh my God, is it is so, is yeah, you, that, you nailed it. I mean, that's like simple solutions to complex problems. If there ever was a good example of that, 
me spinning in my own shit, really like, well, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? And then here you are an absolute expert in the topic. I talk to you almost daily and I don't even think to ask you about it. Like, what the hell is that all about? Super it's bizarre, about right? Not, it's about not being in alignment. It's about not having heart, mind, spiritual coordination and, and also body coordination. It's all, it's, the, the, we, we're not kidding here, people, when we talk about this stuff, because it's real. Unless you, unless the mind and the feelings and the actions and higher, drawing on higher power is all, all your little wheels are in alignment, all your little ducks are in a row, there ain't going to be no quacking happening. And something as simple as saying, oh, Xavier, you've written umpteen books and you've edited umpteen others and you've been doing this for decades and oh why don't I ask him <laughs> it's almost it's almost ridiculous I actually it is almost ridiculous it's almost ridiculous I I had a gal reach out to me a couple weeks back she's like oh my god you gotta help me my boyfriend is like highly abusive and he treats me horribly and I want to leave and my parents are really concerned and they're asking me to come back and stay with them. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is so, it's so true when you're, when you're out of alignment with yourself, those super obvious things hmm. to do completely elude you they're just like they're not even they're right there but they you don't even see it it's you so don't weird. see them you don't see you don't see them and this and this is just a repeated pattern in life in general when people are at a particular state stage in of a life process which brings me to this topic of discussion for today which is about the various stages of life process that people go through like this is just one way of looking at the pie of life and just to sum it up it's all about two dimensions of being and one dimension of being is competence and the other dimension of being is what do we call it incompetence <laughs> well no 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 um, well, there's the competent okay there's the competence uh, incompetence spectrum and what's the other one, Renee? Um, you mean the others? Oh, the yeah. the fun the functionality. Functionality, yeah. Fun the functionality. Function functionality, right? And so there are four stages to this process because each of the two spectrums are actually different things. Functionality and and competence are actually different things. Renee, walk us through those four stages. Okay, so you wrote this them down. <laughs> yep, I wrote them down and 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 I've actually like this is the trippy part about I think sort of committing to such a level of trying to like understand reality, understand myself, understand uh, you know maintaining awareness levels about not only my present state of being but what has brought me to this place, right? What I've had to go through, the genesis, the, you know, trial and error, all these kinds of things. And you, you presented this idea, idea to me after you read my manuscript and, and proposed that there's this arc of my story, which is starting with uh, inefficient dysfunctionality right, right this right. was so we're looking so yeah so we're looking at we're, we're looking at efficiency versus functionality right yep uh, and we're and we're looking and of course efficiency is a spectrum so you go from inefficient to efficient and then there's functionality where you go from dysfunctional to functional now this is emer this was an emergent property of the book so this is something that renee had in her head that she had to have all of these things in her head before she could write anything my advice to her was just write the damn thing and then we will see what emerges from the writing. And what happened was that in the first draft, we discovered that there was this pattern of Renee's life and we had a, a rather long discussion about the pattern of Renee's life, but we realized that it was actually the pattern of everybody's life. Yes. 
one way of yes. look, looking at the reality pie between it's kind functionality of... and dysfunctionality and 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 efficiency and, and inefficient and inefficiency. Yep. So the so the arc as Xavier presented it to me was the beginning of my life was this place of inefficient dysfunctionality, right? Like I was not able to fucking do anything, anything for myself. I was, mm. I was handicapped in a lot of ways. Like I was um, just, you know, I, w- I, w- I had problems with drugs and alcohol. I had problems with getting my shit together. I had problems with holding down a job. I had problems with relationships, huge problems with relationships, huge problems with myself, you know, and it was, it was dysfunctional, but it was also extremely inefficient dysfunctionality. Like I was just burning it at both ends, all engines go in the wrong direction. And it was like a train wreck collides with a, you know, like it just, it, it it was worst case it was, scenario. It was, it was, it, yeah, it was a worse, it was a slow motion train wreck. So let's start by breaking this down because there are, the other stages proceed from that logically. But I think we need to actually to unpack this one first. Of, unpack this one a little bit first. Okay, yeah. Let's first look at uh, functionality for, versus, versus dysfunctionality. Functionality is like, in broad terms, in this particular context, it means your basic skill at life. Can you do life? right? Being human is quite tricky. Uh, It takes quite a few goes at it before you get it right. How many will depend on your soul frail, your your soul's agenda Mm -hmm. over, spread out over quite a few lifetimes, more than people generally give it credit, and in different ways. Uh, And even even and even if your belief system is that there's only one life one incarnate life, there is still like the other life, the so-called afterlife, the non-material life, uh, where you will continue this process. So I'll leave that to people in their own religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs, whatever. But just for the sake of this argument, let's just talk about the fact of functionality. Functionality has has to do with the ability to be um, doing human well, Yes. Obviously, in your skill, current, in your current, in your current, in your, in your current material incarnation. Yeah. Uh, however, you want to interpret that. So you've got a, you've got a material. So you've got your, li- your life, and you're trying to do life properly. Now, doing life obviously requires a whole of a lot of skills, and people vary hugely in their competency within those skills. Right. So you've got this fun, this functionality this competence, this functionality, um, you can be like really good with people, but really bad at maths. You can be really good with fine motor skills. You know, you can, you can do magic with your fingers. What, where is in you trip over sand because your gross motor skills aren't developed. Uh, you can be very savvy politically while being a complete disaster as a parent. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, you can be an artist. So, but lack business um, know how to make it actually work for you and have incredibly talent, uh, incredible talents that go kind of yes. like to ruins, really. Yes, exactly. You can, yeah. you can be, if you can be, you can, you can through practice over lifetimes have developed a really great skill at, at having excellent health and ha- at, at excellent health, but you're not very good at aesthetics. So you're a very ugly, healthy person. Or you can be on the other end of the scale. You can very be very highly evolved in your personal aesthetics and be a, an objectively gorgeous person who's just riddled with all sorts of health problems. Or you could be See? healthy physically, but mentally you're a fucking nightmare. Exactly. Exactly. So exactly. So the see how you have to have be able as as a human you you, you need to be like you're just like a member of a one man one person one woman band and you've got to be able to play all of these different instruments in order to get the orchestration to fulfill your 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 ultimate potential as a musician in the symphony of life yeah but but 
the instruments that you play, you might be really, you just might be really good at the saxophone and suck at the violin. But unfortunately, you need all of these things together. So what we're all trying to do in transurfing is make ourselves at least aware that all of these different things have to be handled. And you might not want to be like, you might, it might just not be a priority in your particular incarnation to be a master of all trades. Maybe you can find happiness without maybe, I mean, I think that finding professional success is a, one of the fundamentals for happiness, but, you know, that's maybe you. somebody else, that's for, that's for me, maybe for somebody else, it's, you know, maybe they, maybe they fulfilled that requirement in a past life and they don't have any inclination to do it in this one. Or it might, or it might be an agenda for a future life. Yeah. And every and and you if, because the because I've been I have explored quite a bit on the life between lives issue, and a lot of people who have come have died well almost died and come back, and have got into that into have a lot a lot of people have reported that uh, they came with an agenda, and they haven't uh, achieved that agenda, and they've come back in order to fulfil that agenda, but that agenda could be anything. So it's real. That's another, that another good reason why it's a good idea not to uh, judge people prematurely because you don't know what their agenda is. Yeah. You just don't know. You don't and, know what they're going through at a spiritual yeah. level. Yeah. And you I don't. Mean, and and, and your and their value system, spiritual value system, might be different from you because simply their priorities are different. Right now, my agenda is whatever, and yours is whatever they're both equally valid they're both yes. equally and unfortunately in extreme cases we might not like some people's inquiries life inquiries some people's life inquiries might be to start off being a trailer trash drug fuck up not that i'm thinking about anybody in particular and then <laughs> gradually getting out of that space and through that learning ultimately come to a completely different state of being and from there be overflowing with the ability to be human in certain areas that might be extremely useful for other people. For yeah, I mean, I have to say that it's, it's kind of interesting, like, as I started to mull over in my mind this idea of this arc, this genesis from inefficiently dysfunctional to efficiently functional, it's, it almost like, it almost beca be has become comical to think back on that version of myself because I am removed at this point, but seeing that genesis and being able to understand like where I started out and how it's happened and what it's taken me to move out of that space and separate and keep certain aspects of that and be okay with it, right? Accepting myself. But like it, it, it almost makes it seem like a, a movie or something that I'm able to see myself a lot more objectively. And even as I continue to make the little fine tuned writings and go over some stories in my mind, you know, what would have previously prob probably triggered me into like a negative memory that would have spun me into an induced transition. Like now I read the story after I get done writing it and I'm like, oh my God, that's so awesome, you know? That's so mm. awesome that I got to experience that. And now I can look at it and like, it's, it, it has been healing beyond anything that I've really done it, lately. I mean, it's, 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 it's been a massive endeavor of going in and doing something that has definitely... I can just, I can, it's, it's almost like I'm putting the, um, I'm putting it to bed, but mm. I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's a trip. It is an absolute trip. And I would uh, definitely recommend it to anyone. <laughs> yeah. I, there, there's a, there is a huge value, especially in the, in the healing process in being able to look at your life and write it down 
and have somebody look at that and challenge you on parts of it, et cetera, oh, et cetera. Huge. Uh, because then you you can reframe things. You can look at it differently, et cetera, It's, et cetera. All, in the, it's so, all in the reframe. It's all in the reframing. It's all in, 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 in just having, even just having that change of perspective changes your consciousness enough that will make you a quote unquote better transurfer. So and let's talk about- And we'll bring you to the next level. Yeah. Okay. So let's. So we've unpacked functionality as the ability to do something or not. Now, then there is efficiency and inefficiency. Now, mm -hmm. this has to do with the way that the energy flows, right? Yes. This is all about flowing, right? And consistency. So the consi consistency, flow, getting that sweet spot of importance or non or, or lack of importance. Not too much importance, not too little, because too much importance, everything gets agitated and flies off in different directions. Renee's challenge, as she has talked about endlessly, <laughs> is tending to go in the direction of too much importance, agitation, everything flies apart. Yes. And balancing as we've also forces, got, think, balancing excess forces, potential, excess yeah. potential, too much energy in the wrong place, blah, 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 blah. So that's all that's inefficient, but equally inefficient is. Uh, not getting enough importance happening, not getting enough energy behind it, not getting enough commitment or something. So mm -hmm. you either so it's a bit like a river. Uh, at one end, you've got uh, a rapid flow, rapids over rocks, agitation, wild movement, yeah. chaotic stuff, Debris. which has its own power. Debris, which has its own power, but it's completely destructive. Yeah, it can tear you apart. At the other end, you've got a sluggish, slow-moving river that's practically stagnant, mm -hmm. which, again, is not flowing enough in order to do the thing that a river should be doing, yep. ideally. And you've got mosquitoes and the whole thing's a mess and the whole thing stinks because the flow isn't there. Yes. And then there's the sweet spot in the middle where you have the flow going clear water, nice, it's moving along, it's not going to suffocate you and you're, it's not going to stagnate you at the same time it's not going to tear you apart mm -hmm. so efficiency has to do with finding that sweet spot of importance finding that sweet spot of being able to manage the energy of a situation mm -hmm. so what happens in the the in this particular hero's journey that we're all on and we're just using Renee and the book as an illustration of that for everyone is that people tend to start off in a state of inefficient incompetence, inefficient dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that they have a dysfunctional life. Now, to a certain extent, there's a value system attached to this and it's real, and it, and we, we are making value judgments. But on the most, for the most part, we could generally agree, for example, that uh, a certain level of wealth is better than poverty, mm -hmm. a certain level of mental health is better than mental ill health. Physical health is better than physical ill health. Yes. Uh, rela functional relationships where people are honest with each other and exchanging uh, love and knowledge and committed to each other's growth is better than people who are committed to each other's destruction through dysfunctional relationships that keep everybody in a state of constant emotional and mental confusion and agitation. Yeah. So in the first stage of Renee's life, you of course will agree, Renee, that you were living a dysfunctional life. You were unhealthy, you were poor, you were mentally unwell, you were emotionally unwell, your relationships absolutely sucked. Oof. Practically everything wasn't functional. Yes? Yeah, there was nothing functional. There was nothing functional. Nothing was functional. Maybe the, the only that thing that was functional was my physical body was functional, but I even polluted that with a bunch of drugs and alcohol. So exactly. So yeah, it was kind of there was. Uh, I mean, looking back, especially after reading the story, I'm like thinking, man, it really was. It really was absolutely the case. Yeah, and a lot of the millions of people are watching this will can relate to that. They can relate to being in the state of of dysfunction yeah they can relate to just having sucky lives right their, so lives, then, their lives they're in suckville yes yeah, so then i we, i know we haven't talked about this like 
directly, but then once I came, once I came out of, let's say the abusive marriage and the poverty, and I got myself into the jewelry business and I started like making a little bit of money, but then I was still into drugs and still into shitty dudes. That would then be the next stage of the arc, which is in a, which is efficient dysfunctionality, correct? Right. Okay. So we need to unpack the efficient, inefficient. So in the first stage of your life, you're inefficiently dysfunctional. Uh, you can't, it's like, here's a, here's a classic example of inefficient dysfunction. You are so bad. Your life is so dysfunctional. Everything is falling apart that you want to commit suicide, right? Inefficient dysfunction is like not even being able to get that right. You attempt yeah, suicide you and you fail that. miserably. You can't yeah. even, because everything you try fails. You, you even <laughs> fail at failure. If you want to, if you want to put it in. You can't even in, give in, up in properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't even give up properly. Inefficiency is about not being able to achieve your goals because the flow, the energy flow isn't right. So for example, uh, the difference between, you're still this, okay, in between inefficient dysfunction and efficient dysfunction, you're still dysfunctional. The value system is, is rotten. The, um, the, uh, the manifestations are all crap. <laughs> everything, is, everything is crappy. But the difference between inefficiency and efficiency is that inefficiency, you're not even good at being crappy. Yeah. So say you want to score a drug on a street corner, you can't find a drug dealer. Got it. You spend all day looking for the drug dealer and nothing happens, right? Yeah. Or you, or people start, or you have a really dysfunctional relationship where somebody wants to start an argument, but the argument doesn't even create the damage that it could do if people were better at being cruel. Do you see what I mean? It's yeah, like they're sure. cruel, but they're clumsy. It's, there's yeah. a clumsiness about inefficiency. So if you think about inefficiency as being like not being able to manage the energy of a situation, inefficiency is clumsy, it's scattered, it's all over the place. So you end up having the worst of both worlds. You can't even be bad at being bad. Yes. Right. Yes. So, and it's yeah, comical when you, yeah, when you, when you, when you, when it's like that. And and any and all of you millions watching, you can just ask yourself: there are surely there are parts of your life where you could be doing better, but it, but it, but even like at things that aren't particularly good, in that sense. Yeah whether you think of it as morally good or ethically good or just even life enhancing or life diminishing, which is a which is a term I prefer to use. I don't think that drugs are life enhancing. I think they're life diminishing. Um, I don't that takes us away from the uh, moral aspect of it because people can look at it as right and wrong and that's your right to look at it like that. That's your prerogative. But I don't think that it's particularly useful for what we're trying to do with transurfing, which is to make people aware of the, the state of their consciousness and, and raise their consciousness so that they can get a better class of life. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you've got to be able to unpack the efficiency and inefficiency from the functional and dysfunctional. They're different things. You can be bad at being bad, but then as we, as we work out, eventually you get so bad at being clumsy that you either die or something has to give. And if you get out of the, the um, inefficiency, you start becoming efficiently dysfunctional, which means mm -hmm. you get better at being bad. Yeah, that uh, was, I was really crime. good at that one. Yeah, yeah. You had an insight. We're not going to reveal what it is, blah, 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 because we don't know no spoilers in this one, but we're just looking at the general arc of the story. So... The point is that at some point, Renee switched over to becoming better at being bad. So oh, she was able, and and in a rather spectacular way, there was it, it, it just it was like a, it was like a quantum shift. Yes. Right? Now people misunderstand quantum shifts. They they, what happens? A quantum shift can be like a very small thing. I mean. In physics, it's actually a very small thing. It's it's about, for example, moving from one an electron from one shell of a of an atom to another one, and that process is instantaneous. There's no intermediate. It's like the electron jumps out of this reality and instantly jumps back into the reality, without having gone through there like that. Do you see what I mean? 
If something's mm -hmm. in orbit, it will climb. But at, at a quantum shift, this vanishes from reality and reappears in this reality with nothing in between. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it happens like that when you, if you get into, this is where you get into a flow state of alignment, right? So Renee went from chaotic energy to something, suddenly something happening that made her go into alignment, but she was in alignment to dysfunction. Yes, <laughs> which is I what's was in so alignment funny. to be in a being a some, being a something. some crazy person, some, <laughs> some something insane, right? So in the early part of her life, it was all insanity, but it was disorganized insanity. When she flipped over from incompetence to competence, sorry, yeah, from funk, uh, yeah, from 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 that clumsiness to efficiency, inefficiency to efficiency, she became efficiently dysfunctional. Yeah. Suddenly, a whole bunch of things that were bad with her manifested instantly or almost instantly, right? And this is the thing that people don't understand about reality transurfing often, is that reality transurfing is more about efficiency than it is about functionality in many Wait, cases. And it's more, it's more about efficiency than it is destination. Yes, exactly. So if, as a, the, the common analogy that, we're all, that we often use is that you're a car, that, that you're a car and you're going, to, you're going to a destination. So efficiency is about getting a better car. Like you're going from a Volkswagen to a Ferrari. Transurfing can, if properly applied, can take you from being a Volkswagen to a Ferrari. But it, we don't talk enough, in, at least in the old version of transurfing, about the destination that that car is taking you to, which is about the functionality. You because can still drive you it can, straight to hell. Yes, exactly. You can drive straight to hell and very fast and very efficiently, <laughs> right? So if you apply transurfing techniques, but you haven't done the work on your functional self, your value system, the things that you are trying to manifest, you will manifest your things much more quickly, that your, your materializations will happen much faster and in the, that it will take the path of least resistance in the most efficient possible way, but there'll still be crap destinations. You can take your 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 beat up lemon of a Volkswagen to Las Vegas and lose all your money, or you can take your Ferrari and get to Las Vegas in one tenth of the time in style and still lose all your money. Yes. Right. So the difference between functionality and dysfunctionality and efficiency is inefficiency. Well, with efficiency, you can get there much faster with less energy expenditure. But the functionality aspect of it will mean that you will invite disaster much more quickly and much more um, with much greater contrast. Well, let's give so, an example. Let's give an example. Sure. Can, can, Go ahead. Can, can you think of something right off the top of your head? About being dysfunctional? Well, OK. Well, you go ahead. You go ahead. Well, for example, I mean, a classic example that we've given before is the lottery winner, right? Somebody who has achieved, someone who has achieved uh, efficiency at an, an efficiency of alignment to the point where they've been absolutely able to manifest this sudden windfall of energy in the form of cash. Yep. But unless they've done the actual work on the functionality aspect, they will fritter that away in no time to the point where it might actually completely blow apart their entire lives. So, so, this, so, so, so uh, this is a good, I just had this insight and this is a good way to put it. When you're, when you're, so when you're transurfing, regardless if you understand if you were doing it or not, when you're moving around the alternative space and you become empowered in some way. Yes. Whatever, whatever frequency you're resonating at, you're going to spin that lifeline rapidly if you become yes. empowered. So yes. if, if, you're, if you're rocking a shitty life and you're like doing stuff that isn't part of your soul frail, but you have the power to do it efficient, efficiently, maybe you got money, maybe you got power, whatever, 
then you're going to accelerate in that state of being to that end outcome quickly, which is what I did. Exactly, exactly. So it's we, we come back to this idea of efficiency versus functionality. You get you are in the first stage, inefficient dysfunction, you're even bad at being bad. In the second stage, you are becoming much better, you become much better at being bad. You're more powerful at bad. being bad. You're powerful yes. at bad. You suddenly come into power. But that, of course, each 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 stage carries its own lesson and its, uh, its own learning, its own part of the growth process and there you really do need to go through all of them because all of us start off as being clumsy and incompetent at something and we might not even realize that what we're doing is dysfunctional and not life enhancing because it looks good on the outside and blah blah blah. so in in, in it almost in a sense that being bad at being bad say is it can protect you your own your own clumsiness can protect you from getting into real trouble. You yes. might have a sucky life, but it's not sucky like on steroids. Whereas, yes. whereas the inefficient, whereas efficient dysfunction is suckiness on steroids, and it has with it tremendous contrasts, sudden leaps, followed by sudden crashes, and it's just this huge. The the pendulum swings like this. Yeah. Right, and powerfully and fast. What comes to mind when you say that is the man that um, I made friends with when I moved, when I bought my house in Modesto, and he expressed the desire to downsize and get rid of his home, and perfect roommate material, I let him move into my house, he was a perfect gentleman, he was never home, he had an amazing career as the deputy public defender for Stanislaus County. And he was a complete fuck up and he ended up killing himself. And which this- is really sad. Oh, which is really sad. He was highly, he was highly, this is a thing where you have to recognize that this is not global. He might have been a very good in his professional life, but his personal life was completely out of balance, et cetera, et cetera. But because but unfortunately, the efficiency that he bled in his prof- that he had in his pers- p- profession bled into his personal dysfunctional, dysfunctional, and and basically his cup. If he had been able to use the excess potential in his profession and channel it creatively, yes. manage it better in his personal life, he could have raised that bar. It was like yeah. right. It was it was a bit like. Um, being in a car and having one tire that's really well aligned and overinflated, uh, yeah, bleeding and but but bleeding the overinflated air from that tire somehow into another tire that was on its last legs and with it the just worn blew. tread yeah. and it just blew apart. And as a result, with that major tire blowing up part that wheel became and he was running also the car so fast he was on a yeah. highway going at 100 miles an hour. That just skidded him off the road and he crashed. Oh, God, it, it is, it is right. so true. The story behind what happened to him and the professional stuff that was going on. He was the big uh, attorney for a high profile case that was all in the newspapers and he was on the front page of the paper two days before he killed himself. I mean, it was yeah. like, it, it was <laughs> exactly what we're talking about here. He, he hmm. became extremely powerful and then drove that power into his dysfunction and just took a swan dive off of a and, San Francisco would, hotel building. And I would love, and I would love to be in on the meeting with his spirit guides in the afterlife life review meeting, which oh, tends, which unpacks your life. <laughs> and I would love to have been just a witness to that and said, and because every because this is another thing that people from the comeback from the between rives talk about they'll say well there is the life review thing where you get to actually see every decision you've ever made and the consequences of those decisions and the impact emotionally uh, physically and mentally on the people that you interacted with blah oh. blah 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 it's like yeah. it's a real heavy it's a real oh. heavy trip it's a real fortunately they all say that it's done in an atmosphere of utter love and support it's like being in the ultimate um support group yeah <laughs> but wow it's still it, it's still extremely grueling so it's better 
this is and this is obviously our hope for the millions of people watching it and actually even for the millions of people who aren't watching it that people do the work here on earth before they have to deal with that afterwards because they all say that it's much it, it's if you don't do it doing it here is much more efficient than doing it out there well i actually uh, had a dream about a year ago where he came to me in my dream and he was asking if he could come back to earth and i had to tell him that the decision was a permanent one that he couldn't come back and i woke up from that dream it was very upsetting it was really lucid and it was i honestly did feel like in whatever after life after state of being he realized that what he did was permanent for this life and for this incarnation yeah for, for exactly. this incarnation and you can't and, back, you, you can't come back as you in this particular world yeah line, right so there might they in the alternative space which has infinite possibilities there might be other world lines where you get to replay that life but you're not going to replay it in this particular world line yeah because that's just that not one's the way done this, this particular world line this particular set of infinities works it's burned I mean, yeah, it's burnt. I mean, you burned that bridge. That, but that, but there are infinite potentials. And yes, if you can, want to, you can replay a life. Usually, though, my I would imagine that it's just easier to, okay, let's let's just start. unpack all of this and then let's start again and let's just set up a new situation where we try not to maybe, kill ourselves. We we try not to kill ourselves. <laughs> we might try to fly off the handle. We try not to be so efficiently dysfunctional yes. that everything flies apart. Yes. Right? So so what what the take home message of this is don't come to reality transurfing thinking that you can get away with being given all of these tools that we give you this this way of thinking that we you, and and think that you can become really efficiently dysfunctional and not pay a price for it. Yeah, that's a right? very that's a, it's a very good point. You, you don't come, and this is and this is part of the reason why a knowledge like this could potentially be dangerous is because if a person is not tuned to the frail of their soul and in alignment, they could use this knowledge and do some pretty gritty stuff to their layer of reality for sure yeah 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 sure and we don't know what you we don't know as individuals what your soul frails are we don't know what your soul wants for you because that's the definition of a soul frail it's like what your soul wants what your higher beings wants for you etc cetera, etc cetera. your might high being might might well want you to experience some dysfunction but if it's deficient the, but the value of efficient dysfunction is that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger <laughs> so which moves you to the next level where you suddenly realize I've become really, really good at being really, really bad. So now if you see if the if if clump if the clumsiness and inefficiency of the first stage doesn't kill you, you make it to the next stage, which is where you become better at being bad. And if you but if you become better than being bad and it, that doesn't kill you, like unfortunately it killed your friend, then you get to the next level. And the next level is where you start looking at your priority becomes functionality, doing things that are life enhancing, having a having prioritizing health, a healthy attitude, prioritizing health in every direction, prioritizing yes. health and healing in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, and in your material materializations your god amen economic. hallelujah you are fucking yeah. just nailing this yeah this, is, this is where it's at <laughs> this is about health this is about if you've gone through all the first two stages of dysfunction you then now have to flip it into the function the thing is though when you prioritize health and you realize i've got to get my relationships together i've got to get my body together i've got to get my mind together i've got to get my my feelings together i've got to get my spiritual connection together i've got yeah. to get all of this stuff together and that can be really scary yeah the great as thing i is you to... as i have as i have <laughs> experienced the, the, firsthand in the last that's... six years of my life absolutely and the great thing about that is that you don't have to do it all at once 
<laughs> yeah. You don't have to you don't have to put the huge amount of pressure. You don't have to put so much importance on doing it that that flies apart too. But the problem is it will be scary. And so you're and because you haven't had any practice at being functional, you're going to be clumsy at it. So we're back to inefficient functionality. But at yes. least you're on the heart at least at that point, you're on the right you're on the right path. You're on a path of life and that's life enhancing rather than life diminishing. You're yeah. on a path of healing yourself and healing your relationships and heal and providing an opportunity for their healing to happen as well. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because it's not because unfortunately when you're dysfunctional, it tends to be all about you. The more functional that you become, you realize that you're not the center of the universe. Well, you are the center of your own universe, but there are other consciousnesses in existence. You start seeing life more as a negotiation between consciousness rather than dog eat dog competition, right? You're looking for win win scenarios rather than win lose scenarios. Yeah. The first stage is lose lose. The first, the second stage is <laughs> I win. If you can call it winning, you yeah. lose. Yes. The third stage is we're win we're looking for we're looking for win win winning but we're not very good at it so sometimes it's going to be you win i lose but i will lose in a functional way where i can find the benefit in my loss oh god you're saying that so well yes that's so right? true yes the, you're, the, you're 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 there you're there to where you can actually derive information that is going to help you become more efficient in your alignment and your eyes are open and exactly. you're like, even if you're fucking up, you're like, okay, yes, yes. I know I'm fucking up right now and I'm going to figure out soon how to not fuck up at this thing and you're aware of it and you're working through it. So in stage three, which is inefficient functionality, life still hands you lemons, but you're learning to make lemonade. This is when right. I found reality transurfing in my this story. This is when you're right. This is the yes. This is where you find reality transurfing, and other people find other modalities that work for them. Good for them. It just happens to be that Renee and I happen to be fans of reality transurfing, and we're not even fans of like traditional reality transurfing. Although Renee admits that she's much more an orthodox transurfer, I'm more like a neo transurfer. I'm like reform transurfing. <laughs> like there's a difference between. Orthodox Christianity and or Orthodox Judaism and Reform Judaism. <laughs> yes, the, and the, and, but we can still agree on so much. But I tend to, be, but I tend to be much more eclectic in my approach. But that's okay. It works. Hey, look, don't it works, right? Yes. <laughs> but, what I'm, but what I'm getting at, but what I'm getting at is that you've got this, this in this stage, you realize that you've screwed up, but you become awakened to the possibility of a better life on so many levels. You just have, you just, you're oriented towards health rather than in ill health. Even right? though you might be struggling with old patterns, old habits, um, falling back the, into negative thinking, you're still involved in the, pe with the pendulums that are in your life exactly, and you don't exactly. know how to necessarily get them off yet, but you're at least pointed in the right direction. Exactly. And one, yes. I would argue that the millions of people watching this are watching this because some part of them is calling them to that health. Yeah. They figure that there might be something in all of this stuff that can help them to become more functional. But accept the fact that because you haven't had practice at being functional, if you're at this stage, that you're going to be inefficient at it. You're not very good at being good, but at least you're giving it a shot. Yes. Right. At least you're giving it a. At least you're giving it a shot, which is a hell of an improvement over somebody who's like really, really powerful, but real, a real screw up. Yeah. Yes. Right? At least you're not. You're, you're screwing up, but again, it's a low power screw up. You've traded in the crashed the the crashed Ferrari for a nice functional Toyota, but at least. I mean, it's it's more efficient than the yeah. clunky lemon that you used to drive in, in stage one, but also your sat-nav is better and you're choosing better destinations. Absolutely. That's even yes. if you might get there slowly, clunkily, even if the the car that you're dealing with is not like tuned to perfection, but at least you're going somewhere. Yes. 
that's yes. worth that that's a healthy place to go yes. you're not driving to las vegas anymore to lose all your money you're driving to some sweet little hamlet in new england <laughs> To take a sabbatical nice and think about some stuff. And, <laughs> that's right, and to think about some stuff and to chill out with the locals who are all very nice and polite and say, are you all right, dear? Can we do anything yes. to help? No, yes, we're, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for asking. That's okay, dear. We're here if you want to. <laughs> you want yes. the help. We're here. That, that, to be, you find that you that people show up that can help you to wherever you are. If you happen to be at a rather low level of, of, but you're at least at a low level of functionality. You will find the people that will help you. All the stuff at that you level. Need to come to you. Yes. To, at that level, right? Yes. And and you might have really lovely relationships with them up to a point, but then you grow, and they're only capable of taking you to here. But you're starting to move to here, and then other people will come in to take you to the next level. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So. There, that's so that's, the, that's that lovely level of it's not perfect, right? It's not it's not it's not absolute rah rah rah, but at least it's healthy. Yes, and that's and what's important least, because it's a healthy snowball open. that will gather. Yes, yeah, that will grow exponentially. It's clean. It's a clean snow snowball rather than the previous snowball that was huge but was full of crap and slush. And it was just, and yes. it was destined to fly apart. This is a clean, tight snowball made of really good powder, right? Yes. So it just it can it can powder is for those of you who don't ski is how often how people refer to the right um, snowy conditions for skiing. Anyway, the point is, blah blah blah. Okay, so it's going, it's going, it's going, and it's going. This is where most people. Uh, when they encounter transurfing, because that's where you were when you encountered transurfing, and that transition between dysfunction and ill health to function, just functional and, and health, but it's still inefficient. Yes. This is where the priority should be on acquiring uh, way, different ways of thinking, broadening your awareness further, raising your consciousness more, acquiring the tools necessary to continue this process. You're a fucking genius, Xavier. I am. I am. And you then are, go... you are, you, the, the fact that you can, can correlate the whole, like it, it's, this is, this is useful for anyone in any stage of this arc. I mean, mm. you're, I think you're right. Most people are going to find themselves in the third part, right? The inefficient, yeah. the, it, the, 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 inefficiently functional the inefficiently functional and that's where most people find transurfing because it, their soul is calling them to find at least something that might be of help to get them from dysfunction to function right yes and of course it's going to be inefficient but it's like any other skill efficiency is about flow and, ma and energy management and so continue and a, continuation of and persistence staying, per, yes persistence staying on it or, but healthy persistence, yes. not dogged, narrow-minded, dysfunctional persistence, which means I will just cream over everybody and destroy them. Openness. And you destroy yourself in the book. This is about persistence in openness, being willing to engage with new ideas, being willing to, to put in the time and effort to acquire the skills, awareness. Look, and again, it's not universal. I a couple of days ago, I behaved really badly in a situation. And the people around me reflected that bad energy. And even when I tried to, to, to salvage a situation and acknowledge that I was being behaving badly, they didn't give me any credit for it. It was like, I don't care if you're having a bad day, blah, 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 blah. It's sort of like, well, okay, gee, you really handled. I was thinking about the other, well, you really handled that well. I'm trying to be apologetic and you're not even gracious enough to accept the apology but then i have to look back at myself because i have to ask myself well what is it about me and these people in this situation that we all handled it so badly yeah. i had to take away and had to look at myself and say okay the point is they're operating at their level and they perfectly reflected who you were in that moment yeah it That's wasn't so just good. this guy not and it was this guy not forgiving me i wasn't forgiving myself well and this is a really good point it, coming to the concept of the mirror is like your reality 
is going to absolutely reflect. And I think in my story, I saw that so clearly. I was like, holy shit, this, the, it, it really did play out exactly. It was train surfing from front to end. There was no... Pl- it, my world was giving me exactly what I was doing to myself and giving it. And it absolutely it, and this is, a, this is this is a t-shirt slogan. You do not get what you want, you get who you are. Yes. You get who it's you so are. So good. It's so right? good. <laughs> right. So you have so the whole purpose of trans surfing is to raise your consciousness so you become more aware of who you are right? This is the pop psychology aspect of trans surfing. This is where trans surfing looks at something and say, okay, fine. Let's look at like, just on a psychological level, what you're doing. This is, this is even, even the more woo woo stuff in trans surfing, which is about energy and about, and, and about slides and, and life tracks and lifelines and world lines and the alternative space. But the woo-woo aspect, I mean, the most woo-woo aspect of, of transurfing for me is not really woo-woo at all. It recognizes that the experience of reality that you experience is the result of the interaction between your consciousness and the alternative space. Yes. That's what it is, yep. which is why Perfect your, way conscious, to put it. your consciousness is who you are, the alternative space contains every possibility, but who you are filters out all of the excess possibilities and narrows it down to the to the possibilities that you are open, that you don't filter out, the ones that you accept, and that results in the experience of your reality. Yes. You don't create your reality. This is what this is a major difference between transurfing and all the other modalities. The other modalities cre- credit you with way too much power. They say you create your reality. Bullshit. The realities are already created for you at this level, at the human level. We do not create our realities. We create our experience of our of realities, of our realities through where we are at, our consciousness, yes. where we are at, who we are, determines the relationship between the interface of who we are and the and the alternative space and the interface is the mirror world right damn dude you're turning this biblical yeah exactly it, right? it, it, so, it's so it's like it, it thank god thank god we have the ability to understand the basics and the, yeah exactly i mean we, we have gotten to we've gotten to the point in this journey of the human race, where people are awakening more and more to the possibility that they can think of life in these terms, right? It's the, the gift of this generation is that we are able to do this and transurfing is, is a major tool to be able to understand it. There are other modalities out there, but I'm just simply saying that this, this way of looking at it, taking responsibility to who you are and understanding that who you are determines the decisions that you make, decisions that you make up uh, the decisions that are mental, their ideas that you that you filter through from the alternative space. Even your thoughts aren't, in that sense, your own. Your energy is your own. You own your energy. You own your, your filter. But even the thoughts that come into your head cannot come into your head if you are not aligned to those thoughts. Yes. The feelings that you are feeling cannot, you cannot experience those feelings unless they are allowed, aligned to your being, right? Which is why if you're agitated all over the place and you've got all of this importance around writing a book, for example, and you have all these preconceptions and these other ideas, you filtered those out. But there are other ideas within the alternative space that says, actually, no, the process can work like this and this, but you can't access them because who you are stops you from yes. experiencing what you want. It's a, br- it's a brick wall. You brick wall, exactly. you, you yeah. brick wall yourself. And the only way out of the brick wall is to... Is to, is to stop create stop creating the brick wall you yes. create through your consciousness through your own being your own state of being the brick wall the yes. brick wall only exists as long as you create it yes it vanishes the it vanishes quantumly oh suddenly, yeah yes as soon as you have the awareness that you're creating the brick wall yes it's like i say um when you stop playing the victim healing is instant 
you know? Yeah, well, because yeah and, and the victimhood is just one brick wall. It's just one the, way of looking at the brick wall. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when But if you, you're using the brick wall, but if you're using the brick wall as a way to climb up to support a position, then you're not going to give up the brick wall because it's supporting your position. Yes. Right? Yes. So people are not going to give up stuff that they feel is serving them. It's yes. like you're not going to give up the high paying job that makes you a dysfunctional screw up because you think that you're getting all these benefits from it. You have to be willing to give up that job. Yes. That's, made, got that's, that's, that's reinforcing the screw up. Yes. You have to be, and this will be the topic of our next podcast, accountability. Yep. You okay. have to be willing to actually do the thing that is going to remove the brick wall in between you and what it is that you want. Um, before and I think we all... got, go ahead. No, we've got how much more time for this? Let's, let's go for about another 10 minutes. So let's okay, talk good. about, so let's, let's talk so about the, 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 the final, final step, the final stage. So what, yes. So once you've, so once you've doggedly persistently acquired the knowledge and you've taken it and taken accountability, which is the topic of our next one about yourself. And you've taken stock and you've said, okay, these things have to change. And you actually do them. You become better at being good, better at being functional to the point where you become efficiently functional. And all of a sudden, that's when you're on the rainbow bridge. That's when you're on the gravy train. That's when everything starts working. Yes. That's when you can suddenly yes. say to yourself, that, and I'm going to demonstrate something. I'm going to demonstrate this through something that I call a transurfing tsunami, right? Now, a yeah. transurfing tsunami is a rant. And it's a rant that, you that you're capable of doing more efficiently and, and better when you are at, sta at the stage four, you are efficiently functional. When you are at the cusp of... If the inefficiently functional to efficient to efficiently functional, you can start doing these rants and you can even start practicing now, but they sound like this. At last, my life is working. At last, the people in my life are supporting me and I'm supporting them. At last, I have a clarity of vision about who I am and why I am here. Now, finally, I'm beginning to really understand things. I'm beginning to see into the core of things. I'm beginning to see the way that things are actually working. The way that I'm interfacing between myself and the alternative space is becoming ever and ever more efficient. Now I can answer the trans questions I've been answering myself. Why am I so good at this. It's because I've gotten better, because I've done practice, because I've committed to my growth. I have committed to my awareness. I've committed to raising my consciousness. Now in this place, money is flowing more easily and efficiently for me, and I'm spending it better on better things. And I can have an overflow of money that I can then give to others and share my from my abundance because my cup is now overflowing because I'm better at filling my cup up in the first place. And my cup isn't so full of holes that all of the goodness keeps leaking out. I've plugged all the holes. In fact, I've thrown out the cup of myself and I've constructed a whole new cup that isn't just a cup, it's a bucket so I can contain so much more. So the pies that I bake are bigger and so that the slices that I cut out of that pie are bigger and I can share that because I'm not a glutton. I don't need all of this abundance. I can give it to other people and I can become a source. I can become a source for other people as well as being a source for myself. And through becoming a source for myself and giving that source to other people, they too are now becoming empowered and enabled to becoming a source for themselves. And our lives are, are, are getting better because the, a tide, a high tide raises all, all boats. And so as a result of that, I'm suddenly much more aware and the snowball keeps growing and growing exponentially as I become more and more aware. And yes, occasionally I have reversals, but for the most part, things are working really well. I'm healthier than I've ever been before. I can see more clearly. My hearing is more acute. Uh, I'm less tired. I have much more energy to do things because I'm really aligned with my soul frail because I'm so connected to what I'm doing and who I am and why I'm here that everything is coming easy or doors open up for me. Suddenly I have things that are happening that are odd and bizarre that are exactly what I need right now for who I need to be. And people come to me because they are who exactly who they are and who they need to be. And our interactions are all positive and life affirming and increases our awareness so that we can do more and we can have more and that we can be more. And then we move up even further. And now my mental health is better. I see things with such clarity. I, my emotional health is such is better. I wake 
wake up in the morning feeling that, hey, today is full of possibilities. And I'd really like to embrace them and, and enjoy them. And, and my emotional health is so much better. My relationships with people are more honest and straightforward. And even when we have to have difficult conversations, we're able to move through those conversations really quickly so that we can get to the other side of those conversations and be better people as a result of those better conversations. And so now I'm, my, I'm healthier in my mind, I'm healthier in my body, I'm healthier in my finances, and my spirituality is healthier, I'm able to act more effectively, I act with inspiration, because suddenly my mind has opened up, the filters are no longer filtering out all the good stuff that's been waiting for me all the time in the alternative space, because the alternative space always had all that, that good stuff in it already, and now I've suddenly, I'm now not filtering out all the good stuff, so I'm open to the good stuff, and I'm willing to act on the good stuff, even if it sounds crazy, and even if it's sounds irrational. It's still there waiting for me. And then I find that I do these, these irrational, crazy things. And, for, and they work because this is something that my puny little human mind, when it's in a human state of mind, can't see the big picture. But my higher self knows the big picture. And I'm able to work with my higher self with the bigger picture. And then all of a sudden, there's this tsunami flood of a wave of good fortune just washing over me and washing over everything and clearing out all that crap. And all of a sudden, sure, there's disruption and sure, there's change and sure, there's all this sort of agitation, but out of it comes a whole new growth. And soon what was once a desert is now a flourishing forest of beauty. Oh my God, dude, that was epic. That was beyond, so you know what I just, you know what I just felt when you did that? I felt like- I'm, I'm a little bit dizzy now. <laughs> yeah, dizzy I can now. imagine. I'm a little dizzy too. I actually envisioned that we were standing on a stage and like you walked up and just like pushed me off the stage <laughs> and you were like, okay, I'm now the ultimate trans server extraordinaire. That was beyond words. That was so good. That was so, so good. What, that is what efficient- functionality looks like or exactly. sounds like all right? of a, That's all of a sudden the, all of a sudden the little business that you started really takes off because you're actually servicing people who need your product or your service all of a sudden the job that you've always wanted lines up for you because that job is going to help fulfill you and help make you grow in ways that you never even knew you could grow because it'll confront you with things that you can't see because the filter filters out what you couldn't see before but now you can see more and that little pinprick of light has suddenly become a big circle filled with light until suddenly the entire room fills with light. I'm going to start another tsunami if I, you don't stop. <laughs> but the point, the, the, point is, the, the point is that that's what efficient, that's what, that's a vision of what efficient functionality looks like. It's right. awesome. That's awesome. Right. And that's, and right. that's, that, that and is what I'm writing. trying to, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm that's trying to relate this. this to people. I'm, this is what I'm, I'm like, but you, but it's, it's hard to put into words. You know, we say the wave of fortune or the wave of success or, you know, heart and mind coordination, but even that isn't enough. You know, it's when you are fucking doing life well and, and you're doing tsunami. life well to where you can blast it out onto the people around you and it and just starts and, to pop off and, and that tsunami is not about the words although the words came relatively easy to me right and even though i'm a wordsmith but it wasn't the words it's about the energy behind the words it is about it is about we can say the words we can perform an action but what's really important is the an energy behind that it's the state of being behind that i love i love me some reality trans surfing. <laughs> it's so, so that, good. So that's so that's what stage. That's a vision of what stage four looks like when you become I, efficiently functional. Which I I will be I will be totally honest here. I'm probably with my understanding of the various stages and the different shades within each stage that I can, I have enough awareness and enough um, 
it, it, I'm, I'm not naive to it, right? I'm not thinking at this point that I'm operating at my most optimal high, highest self. There, no, no way. Like I'm absolutely headed in that direction and I am more efficient at it for sure. Like hands down this sort of, um, you know, th this, this is, this is pre presented to me with evidence and proof by things like the book or being able to still do a video a day after over two and a half years and all these things that I'm like still doing, but I'm learning how to do better. But even for me, I would say I've got a pinky toe in efficient functionality. My pinky toes as, in it. As do we all. There is a saying, if you want to know whether or not you finished your mission on life, in life or not, ask yourself this question, am I still alive? If you're still alive, you haven't finished. Love it. It's so good. No. Right? Oh, I, I can't I, wait for I, my book to come out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, because the whole point of Renee's book is to show people what it looks like, the four stages, right? To just show that this is just one person's story, but it's an extreme story and it shows you how... This person goes from inefficient dysfunction to efficient dysfunction to inefficient fun after to that midpoint where you find transurfing and you start applying to it because it sings to, it that speaks to you that that message yes, spoke to come, you. Come siren call, come, <laughs> siren call, and then you follow the siren call and you sort of where it led and now and you and you and you're inefficiently functional in many areas of your life and efficiently functional in some areas of your life. But you reckon, but also the good thing about that stage is that it makes you more aware of what stage four looks like. And that, yes. and then you can have a vision of stage four and then you can do your own tsunamis, your own yes. rants. And then all of a sudden that you, you can, you can tune into that energy. You don't always do it. You're not always there, but at least you've had a glimpse of it. You know what it feels like. Yes. That's so important. You know what it feels like. And, and on top of it, the added bonus, or at least this is how I'm seeing it, is arriving to the place where I can have a pinky toe into efficient functionality. I can look back on my past and I can say, with a full, honest heart, that's exactly what needed to transpire in order for me to arrive to my pinky toe into efficient functionality. And it lessens that emotional charge, that butthurt feeling of like, oh, why that all that stuff have to happen to me? And that victim mentality and the any woe is me or any blame to anyone or anything for any reason, it all just kind of, it's like it just right sizes, all of it right sizes. And I feel now that I look back and not only can I say, thank God that that stuff happened, which allowed me the opportunity to move through those various stages and come to the place that I've come to, but also to look back at it and be entertained by it and not look at it as anything other than just like, wow, what an amazing ride I've had. How cool is this? And, how and cool how, is this? And how, and how cool is it that Everything that didn't kill you made you stronger. Oh. Uh, and, and isn't it cool that you don't have to punish yourself for the mistakes of the past anymore? Oh, it's so... You don't have to feel guilty about having made mistakes because all of us make mistakes. All of us make errors. All of us sin. All of us do uh, show up in ways that we could have been better in that moment. But at the end of the day, if we could have been better, why weren't we better? We probably couldn't have been better in that moment based on our awareness. All this is, it's about a commitment to increasing your consciousness, increasing your awareness. And evolving. Be, be, and evolving. And okay, you're gonna, in, you, in, in the process of evolution, you're gonna spend a stage as a snail. Okay, you learn the lessons of the snail. And yes. then you evolve out of being the snail. Not that there's anything wrong with the snail. The snail is just being a snail. 
that's fine. But there's a point where you say, okay, I'm, outgo I'm outgrowing this shell. I'm outgrowing this way of being in the world. I'm outgrowing this state of being. I'm outgrowing these filters that are filtering out all the good stuff that's there. Yeah. I'm ready now to open myself up. I'm ready now to stop resisting the flow of the wave of fortune. I'm going to let the wave of fortune wash over me, even if sometimes that wave is dumping me. Even if it looks sometimes in the short term as if the wave is dumping me. And actually, it looks, it, sometimes it might even look as if I'm going backwards. It's two steps forward, one step back. But it might just be that the wave is washing me back from one life, pa life path, life track, world line, into another one. Yes. But I had to go backwards because when you think about it, tsunami, it starts by withdrawing. Yeah. The water actually recedes because the tsunami is taking up the wave from behind. Right. So yeah. oh, wait a minute. This is this is not what I want the wave to come to me. No, no, no. Sometimes it has to go backwards. And then all of a sudden, the good fortune wave just. Yeah, because you're able to you're able to get and, in there and realize what w that recess of why exactly that's happening, what you need to fine tune in order for the thing to actually then produce. There's a, re there's a reason it's called trans surfing because the surfing imagery is so powerful. You are not the wave yeah. yet, but you can surf that wave. You can ride that wave. You, the amount of energy in a wave far exceeds the surfer. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. But the surfer, you're just utilizing. You're just utilizing. Yeah, the word, the, you, the, you, the person says, "Well, this wave is not going to last forever, and actually, I will outlast the wave." But by the time that I've ridden that wave with awareness and consciousness, an awareness of how that energy is moving and where it's moving to, by the time that wave has washed and crashed against the shore and has dissipated, I will be so much further because I've yes. used the energy of the wave. I didn't have to paddle that distance; I just rode the wave. I love it. I think it's a good place to end. Wow. That was a doozy. I'm going to yeah. walk away from this one. Like my frequency practice is it. hurt. <laughs> just practice, practice all the millions of people watching this practice that just practice it. Even if it's a little, just a little bit, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Just yep. practice this practice another tsunami or we could some we could record some we could pre record some tsunamis for you and you can get a better idea of what it's like. Ooh, and I will put the four different stages of this arc that we're talking about below in the yeah. um, in the subject in the b b b description. So yeah, we can we 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 can sub we the subject we can, the title of this particular cast can be from inefficient dysfunction to efficient function. Yes, but you can you know you can write these different stages out and then start to maybe draw some right awareness about yeah where where you're working from and what you know maybe some insights can come to you on what you can do to move on to the, and, the next and, and, stage and huge and, and hugely important realize that you're going to be in di different parts of you are going to be in different stages at, a, at different times you might be actually efficiently functional in some small aspects of your life and completely inefficiently dysfunctional in other aspects of your life so it's also looking at that broad self audit and say where am i really where am i really rocking and where am i really not doing well at all yeah and where you're really rocking use some of that excess energy from where you're really rocking and re distribute the wealth redistribute the wealth to the other parts of you that are poorer yes it's a great way to sort put of it like yeah it's sort of like like spiritual socialism right like yes the health the, the richer part the hit the the richer <laughs> parts of you voluntarily yes giving of their excess so that the poorer parts of you can start growing so that the whole you see that's the thing about of this way of thinking you have to recognize that these other bits of you are all you even your yep. shadow self even your darker self the things that are nasty you need to look at them and embrace them too because what might appear to be horrible and evil might just have a gift for you there, a great gift of assertion or of strength that you haven't been willing to look at before. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's an excellent and which, point. Which brings us which brings us to the next uh, podcast, which will be the power of accountability. Yes. Yeah, so because this is about in... taking account. Yes. It's about account.
This is I can't wait to I can't wait to knock this one out. Um, okay. So yes, tune in everyone for the next one, The Power of Accountability. Uh, it'll be next week, most likely. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you, Xavier Watercane. That was insightful, delightful, and powerful. I mean, that was really, really awesome. So thank you for and, doing and, that. And, and thank you, Renee, for allowing me the space in which I can do that, in which I can, I can hold express space. myself. Can thank, hold you for, space thank, you for holding, thank you for holding me <laughs> the space. All right, everyone. See you next week. And thank you for tuning in. Peace. Love and mung beans, yeah. Ciao. <laughs>